was teaching a class one day and a student was just filing away and as I got closer to her desk, she threw her file down and she went, oh, I just can't do it anymore, can you do it? <laughs> so I went over to her desk to see what's going on. Her technique wasn't bad, but she was using the wrong file and got me thinking, there are so many to choose from and they all have different uses. So I thought it's time we break it down and learn all about which file goes to what. Let's get started. So you go into the store and it is confusing because which one does go? So let's start with the grit. Okay, so the higher the number, the smoother it will make it. The lower the number, the grittier it is the coarser it is. So the lower the number, the more it will take off. So if we want to do that, do we have any of those in here? I can tell this one by feeling it. This one's a little bit coarser. So one side is 100 and one is 120. Those are lower numbers and those are high grits, like they have a coarse grit, okay? So these will take off a lot of product. Now there is a difference too of stiffness and let me get this one, sponginess, okay? So you can have, for example, mine. One of the first things I put out for product was files because I wanted to have professional files for everybody available because they're hard to find good ones. So I have a spongy one too, but this is 80-80. It's an 80 grit, lower the number, the rougher it is. But because it's built in a sponge, it won't shape it. It smooths it. I know that sounds weird because it's a low grit, but it makes it an even, once you've shaped it, it makes it smooth and gritty for a gel application, for example. So this one here, it doesn't say the grit on it, but it it's softer than mine, so this will do more smoothing. So this will be more ready for nail polish because it's a bit smoother. So when you take an 80, like remember, this is an 80, this is a hundred, so these are these are coarse grits. They will take off stuff, but because this is spongy, it just smooths it. I know that's confusing, but it's a rougher grit, but it'll smooth it ready for gel polish to grab onto. But because it's spongy, it doesn't have a hard surface like this one. This one is hard, it doesn't bend. So it being a hundred will remove product. That was the first probably most confusing thing for me is why is this 100 and this one's an 80 and this one doesn't take off product and this one does because this is hard. So if you get a hard board paper with a coarser grit, then you can file it and because it's tense, it's stiff, it will remove product, which is what you want. Now, had my student that day grabbed the coarser grit, she wouldn't have been so exasperated because she would have been taking off the product that she wanted. So she may have grabbed, it was a while back, I can't remember what grit she grabbed, but she may have grabbed an 80 and filing, filing, filing and not taking any product off. So then that's the course. Then we go into a medium and that is around a 180 grit. And again, this company here has a 180 and on the opposite side, it's much, much smoother. So you could be taking off and then flip it and then do some smoothing around the edges, which is most likely where you're gonna use that. So that's great. I personally prefer the files that have 180 or the same grit on either side, because then I know that file specifically, I use it for that one particular thing. And then I grab another file to do it lower grit. Okay, so let's talk about the different grits and what their jobs are. So after I apply the product, it doesn't matter we're talking about um, if you're using any product, hard gel, acrylic, um, hybrid gel, whatever you're using. We want to start with a coarse grit. So we're gonna dig around here. So here's the coarse grit, 100, 120. And I'm gonna start with that by doing my shaping. Now actually you can do all of your work with just hand files. You don't need to get an e-file. The only thing a hand file can't do is it can't get underneath. That's where e-files are great. And also e-files, you know, they're they're quite a bit faster. They, they take away this motion out of your shoulder and your arm if you're doing it for many years or a long time, it can, you know, play a little wear and tear. So e-files are, they take the pressure off, especially if you're doing it all day, you know, as a full-time tech. 
So whereas the hand file can't file underneath, that's where an e-file is great because it can get underneath. But one thing an e-file can't do, and that is refine the shape. You can take an e-file and buzz around it and get a general, but a hand file is crucial in making that shape nice and smooth and perfectly even. You can attempt to do it, but ultimately you do need a hand file to smooth it right up. So that's the difference between, you know, you can do most of your work with an e-file if you want, but you will need a hand file at some point to smooth up those edges. So this is 100 and 120. So I will do this to remove and shape. That's what I'll do for a higher grit. Remember, higher grit is coarse and it removes product and it does all your work. Does all the shaping. So as I use this coarse file, I am going near my cuticle and you want to be very gentle. You can go all over the nail with this. It's just learning the technique and making sure that you're not cutting the cuticle and not hitting the skin, of course. But I'm able to use this around the whole nail. So I am smoothing around the cuticle. I am shaping my sides. I am paying attention to the free edge. I'm sculpting. This is what I'm doing the whole time right now. I'm just sculpting this entire nail. And I'm getting the basic shape that I want with my coarse file. And that's either 80, 80, 100, or a 120. And it's very, very coarse. So you can apply the same pressure with this one and then apply the same pressure with, let's say, a medium or a fine file. And the fine, same pressure will take off a little bit, just smooth it. But if you apply the same pressure with a coarse, you'll take off way more. So you don't want to use a coarse file to do the nice finishing smoothing on the edges, right? So I only use my coarse when I know I want to take off product when I'm actually sculpting it. Looking down my barrel here. I'm just gonna quickly try to sculpt this up so I can show you what each grit is going to do for us. So now we've used our course file and we've sculpted this up. Now we've got the shape that we want, okay? So I'm gonna jump ahead so we know why we don't wanna do this. There is a file that we can use and we can go right to, this is a smooth and shine file. This would be, the green side is 400 and the white side is 3000, it'll buff it to a shine. So if I go right to the white side and just like, I'm gonna skip all that, and just, I'm in a hurry. I gotta just get a shine real quick and get the customer out the door. If I go right from that coarse file, right to the shine. Now I'm gonna put a little elbow grease into this. That's an old term, it means I'm gonna press really hard, scrub really hard. <laughs> now, you can see there's a bit of shine there, but I don't know if you can get close enough to see that this is so scratchy and so gross that if I put polish on there, and especially with anything with a frost to it, it's gonna sink into those cracks and crevices, it's gonna look horrible. So I went from a coarse to a super fine. You can't do that. You can't skip those steps, and I'll show you why later, how beautiful and shiny it will look. We'll do a side by side. So you can fully understand. So we went from, where is that course again? I'm just gonna buff it back up. So then after you finished with your course and your sculpting and you got your shape down, now we need to smooth it up and make it soft and touchable and ready for nail polish or gel polish, right? Uh, having said that, not too smooth for gel polish. So now I wanna get a medium file and that is a 180 grit. And there is lots of 180s. That would be my medium is around a 180. Here's a 180 here, it says right there. Mine looks like this. And what we do is now I wanna make the edges nice and smooth. So I will go around and fine tune my shape and make sure that the shape is nice and happy. So it's going to take away product, but it's not gonna take it away as quickly as the 100 or the 80, or the 120 for that matter. Okay, you wanna go over that nice and smooth. Now, if we are applying gel polish, we wanna take the medium, the 180 grit, whatever you're gonna use, and you do wanna go around it, and you can even go around the cuticle, make that a little bit more smoother if you want. 
Now, if we are going to have gel polish, we do want to go to a sanding sponge. Maybe these ones, this one might be a little soft, but this type of sponge is good because we don't want to take product off. We're happy with the shape. We've sculpted it. Now it's ready for a gel polish. Now we need it to be a bit gritty for that gel polish to grip on and hold on and stay there. So we can take a buffer like this. I'm not changing shape, even though this is an 8080, right? We're just going to go over top of this and prepare it, keep it rough, but smooth. Does that make sense? <laughs> so it's sculpted, no lumps and bumps. We've sculpted that all out of there. So this is just preparing it now for a gel polish application. Okay, so that now, we can take away the dust. That is ready for gel polish and the gel polish will happily grip onto that. But let's say that you're gonna use this for nail polish, okay? So what we do wanna do is take, take something like our medium file. And we do want to go over this by just going over evenly over the whole thing. Then I'm going to take the fine, take a fine file. Mine is, looks like this. And then here's, let's say, a finish file. We'll take the 220 grit. That's the smooth one. You can feel it. You can just feel it with your fingertips. Just maybe close your eyes, make your senses a little stronger. But if it doesn't say it on there, you can just feel it. And oh, that's the rough side. And that's the smoother one. So I'll take a nice smooth one. And I'll just smooth out my shape, make it nice and smooth and happy. I don't want any ickies. And sometimes to check it, my shapes, I'll put it up to a light and make it a silhouette. So if there's any little rough edge, even just a little one, you can catch it. And when cameraman photographs my nails so close, I try to make sure that I do catch that because you're looking at it really close. So that's how I get so particular, right? Just want to make sure you can put it up to the light and just kind of smooth it over. Take away any of those little bumps. Okay, so now, oh, here's this little sponging bog and you can feel this one too. That's pretty smooth too. I see sometimes people using these, uh, prepping their nail before they put uh, enhancements on um, watch that I don't agree with that because these are too smooth and if you prep a nail too smooth before you put enhancements on that may be why you're having lifting issues you need to have a grittier file in that but that's another video okay so then we will take let's say this smoothing file and little spongy feel to it and we'll go over the whole thing this is not taking away product this is smoothing that surface when you're filing it's the same thing in woodwork or even drywall. When you drywall uh, a wall or when you're doing woodwork, you use grits of sanding paper that go um, like higher and higher and higher in number because it's finer and finer and finer and finer until you can paint it and it's so, so smooth. It just feels like velvet when you touch it, right? So I'm gonna smooth that out. That feels pretty good. Just go over the whole thing. Just give it a good buff. And of course you can see some powder coming off there, but it's not changing the shape. And that's why I like the spongy because it surrounds the nail. It's not that board across there making those kind of <coughs> ridgy. It's smoothing it and bending. If you can just see it, just see if you can see an aerial view there. It's literally bending around your nail. It's just pressing right to see that. That's what you want, it's great. Okay, and then you can go to a super, super fine file. That's back to this one that I have. These are more for natural nails, or if you wanna buff your fake nail into a shine, that's great. You wanna use the um, smoothest side last. So I'm gonna use this green side. Now remember I showed you when I went to the white and green, how it was all scratchy? Take a look at this, you can't see it with this one. But when I turn it over and buff it with the other side, We'll do a side by side so you can see completely the difference. Okay, here we go. I'm switching it over to the white side. You can even hear it. Listen to that. That is the sound of shine. Look at, can you see how shiny that is? So you can see some dust around there. And I also see little bits of glitter because I was glitterifying my nails and 
I clearly put acrylic on here. I was going to file them all, but I just want to sample one nail show you. But I did get some acrylic <laughs> glitter in there, I should say. <laughs> that is so soft. It feels like glass. So I'm just going to put some oil in there. Getting rid of all the dust. Look at that. So literally, if somebody wants a shine, you don't even have to top coat it. You could just leave it just like that. So files aren't so scary once you get to know what you can use them for. Another tip, when you buy your files, do score the edge. And that means if this is a brand new file and you go to use it on your finger, sometimes it'll have a rough edge. And that rough edge is sharp and it's new and it can cut your finger, especially to dig right in there. I've done that, it hurts. So what you wanna do, and I know it's confusing because you see someone doing this, you're like, which side are you? This is the file I'm concerned about. And let's say these are the edges that I'm concerned about. Okay, this is just the file that's gonna help us take away the edge. This is the working file. So I wanna take the one edge and rub it along. You don't have to do it much, just once or twice really, but make sure you do it on both ends of it. And then flip it over and then do this side along here and then do this side along here. And that'll save it so you won't cut yourself or anybody else when you go to use a fresh file. They can last a long time too. You wanna to know how to take care of your files? Check this video out. <laughs>